Everybody, please have a seat. If you haven't already gotten some food, please do so. About to get started. Uh, we're very excited about our event tonight, and uh, we want to welcome you and thank you for coming out to Highland Financial Capital Group's very first wine and cheese real estate investors event. So thank you for coming. Uh, hope you're having a great time so far. My name is Wes Wilson. I'm in investor relations with Highland. And I just want to start by telling you a little bit about the company. Uh, Highland started actually in 2002, and uh, but we do bring together almost 30 years of uh, experience in the Atlanta real estate market, as well as in high yield investments, asset management, construction skills, and syndication services. Highland, Cap Highland Capital was originally formed to be a holding company for its own investments, but due to its growing success, it has evolved into what it is today as an alternative investment vehicle to capitalize on the experience and network of the founders. <clears throat> so investors benefit by being part of a family owned uh, boutique style investment group where every member has a financial interest in each and every property and project. And since there is a very limited, limited room on uh, as far as the uh, number of members uh, for any opportunity. We do treat every investor like an individual part of the family. And speaking of the family, I'd like to introduce the rest of our family here at Highland Capital Group, starting with uh, Sabi Barone as a managing partner, uh, Alan Ogdot, investor management, Greg Levine, administration, Mira Bergen in acquisitions, uh, Rondell Woods, sales and marketing, Audrey Malone, Leasing and Property Management. 
over here. And uh, last, certainly not least, is our office manager, Stephanie Alney. She's the one that ensures that everything happens and get, keeps try. the ball rolling. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Stephanie, who's going to come up and tell you a little, bit, a little bit more. Thank you for coming. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Hi, guys. Thank you again for coming. I realize I'm going to have to hold my mic pack because I have nowhere to put it. <laughs> um, thank you all again for coming. This is kind of the first one of these that we're doing. And we're really appreciative that you all took the time to come out tonight. I know traffic's not, not great. Um, we hope that you guys, can you all hear me? I hear somebody back there going like this. No? Hold on. Can you hear me now? You still can't back there? I do a news show every week. You think I know how to, to work this mic? Yes, that's what You guys can hear me? Okay. I'll speak a little bit louder, guys. So I know Wes Wilson kind of gave you a little bit of background on the company itself. And I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background on uh, Sabi Verone, who's our, our president managing partner tonight, just to have a little background on him, those of you who don't know him. Um, so he's been in Atlanta all of 30 years. He's the owner and manager of Highland Capital Group. Uh, he's been involved in a lot of different types of transactions, of course, such as real estate management, your sales, your financing, your construction, um, in, all in excess of over a billion dollars in the past 28 years. So he's had a lot of success in the industry so far, so we're glad to be on board with him. Um, on top of doing that aspect of the business, he's managed apartment communities, He's managed hotels, high rises, anywhere from here from Atlanta to Miami, Florida. Um, his latest achievement, which he's very proud of, was a publicly noted project in, uh, excuse me, in uh, DeKalb County, Decatur, Georgia, called Candler Park. Uh, was made the papers, made the news, and everything. Uh, it's um, called Candler Park. It was a living and working complex comprised of 86,000 square feet of professional real estate office and restaurant space. So kind of a mixed use area community. Uh, it was the kind of a pioneer project in Decatur, Georgia. So we're really proud of that. It's his latest accomplishment. Um, he's also served, um, on top of serving as president of Highland Capital, um, we do specialize in both debt and equity placements that have totaled in excess of over $300 million and represented over 500 investors in the opportunity-based real estate in different financial transactions. So that's just kind of a little bit of background on what he's done, and uh, we appreciate you guys being here tonight, and we'll talk to you all. And I'm going to introduce Sabi. Come up and speak to us. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, we, look, uh, we look forward for a uh, pleasant evening, an educational evening. Uh, fun, this is on a, a, a casual basis. Uh, we just want to share some ideas, some thoughts. Uh, we are not, we don't claim to be the, uh, the final know-how and say so in uh, by all means, this is our observation only. And we look forward to uh, get your input. <coughs> we would like to, as much as possible, make this thing as interactive as possible. Uh, just so you know, around, the, around the, the room, there are some existing investors of Highland. There are some future existing, uh, 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 some, uh, some other uh, type of in individuals that have shown an interest and some acquaintances. So you're, you're sitting among uh, individuals that kind of realize the opportunity and want to know a little bit more. And that's the reason everyone is here today. Uh, <clears throat> I want to start with, with our presentation. And, and as I said, please make it as interactive as possible. So we'll get to uh, get, get through this thing effectively. Uh, we titled this Highland is about real knowledge, real investment, and real returns. Because 
we all been through the ringer and we all know what this economy is really all about and uh, a lot of people have been through smoke and mirrors before and other type of presentations what we're going to describe here today is hopefully something that's real something that's tangible something that's attainable and and is as, as transparent as possible so we have, we can, Highland has the knowledge base, as you soon uh, see. We offer real investments, meaning those are type of properties that you can go see, you can go check it out, you can look, touch the bricks if you want to. And, and we offer real returns. We mail our checks every, every month around the 10th or the 20th, depending on the, uh, on the opportunity. And, uh, and basically, we, we pride ourselves in that word, the real, real knowledge investment return correspond to real estate. A little bit about us, uh, <clears throat> since 2002, represent over 500 investors, about 500 million in commercial transactions, uh, uh, not necessarily all debt and equity, but some other transactions. Manage, personally manage over 750,000 square feet of space in over 160 properties around the city of Atlanta. We've been doing it about 25 years. Uh, so uh, you, you, you get to see what we, we do. Um, we've been a developer for about 29 years, an asset manager for that, that long, and as on private equity placement uh, close to actually 10 or 11 years now. Um, <clears throat> this is a slide that we created about three years ago. In, in, at the end of 2008, we saw this big opportunity that's coming up, simply because we were in a space of private lending and, and because we've been doing this thing for a long time. But essentially what's going on right now in, in a real estate terminology, the way we see it is that once in a century buying opportunity. <clears throat> this is not an oversell or an outspoken type of a statement, because I don't like to do that. Uh, but it's <coughs> literally the way I see it, it's exactly that. At the end of 2008, <clears throat> we kind of futurized and said that there's a six or 12 months collision that is about to happen. And the collision is going to come from the distress REO, REO properties or commercial back type of uh, uh, mortgage back type of properties that come to the market, and the distressed capital market that exists uh, uh, in 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 or in America. So, and and that's a very unique type of a. Uh, collision because it really never happened like this uh, in in my almost 30 years of experience. Yes, you all, you know, real estate is cyclical, and real estate sometimes is down, sometimes is up, and we've been around that. Financial markets are also kind of cyclical. If there is a war happening, uh, if uh, the oil prices are coming up, the gas prices are coming up, etc. So you know that that kind of the SNL crisis we know about that kind of affects the financial uh, arena. But it never happened, never, until the end of 08, that both segments of, uh, of the financial market and the real estate market to suffer that type of a collision. And as a result, we're going to see, <clears throat> in my opinion, a three to five year, uh, a three to five year depressed situation and I don't like uh, I don't want to be you know, I don't want to be the uh, the one that says that it's uh, depressed but I, I don't want to add to any of the CNN the Fox News etc but uh, uh, you know but but that's what's going to be but essentially that really what creates this ama amazing and massive opportunity and that's the reason we're here all today. Uh, 
So what we want to talk about is we want to get used to the word real estate. And I know it's some, it's, it might be a soft word, a touch, a uh, soft subject, um, and not a very good word. Because after all, that's what's kind of caused this whole thing. But the way we see it, in, at least in a commercial real estate arena, that segment of uh, or that sliver of, uh, in, of, of the overall real estate uh, branch has not been affected. And if it has been affected, now it's what hasn't been affected is its value, its <coughs> inherent value. What's been affected, it's valuation, but not its value. Maybe it sounds a little philosophical, but, uh, but at the end of the day, I'll give you a quick example, okay? if there is a shopping center, a real estate like a shopping center, that must be, there might be 90% vacant. It doesn't really mean that that shopping center has lost its, essential, its, its, its uh, innate value. It might lose its valuation as a result of not having the income stream, but it hasn't lost its replacement cost. The land is still there. And so with a little bit of improvements and a little bit of creativity and a little bit of marketing, especially when you focus into the real um, type of real estate, in a type of real estate that you know will be the low hanging fruits for today's market. If you focus on that, we can talk about that uh, later. If you focus on that sliver and you identify an exit strategy, <laughs> then you can be extremely successful. And in return, for you as investors, you can be extremely safe and extremely secured and have best of both worlds, the security that you want and the, and the, and the high yield returns that can be uh, uh, given uh, from this uh, type of investment. So what we want to talk about um, Just a little bit of background about traditional versus alternative assets, because essentially, I mean, how are Essentially, this is what we are representing. We are an alternative asset investment type. Uh, <clears throat> so, traditional assets. Usually, I mean, it's the, the numbers will show there are 15 trillion worldwide. The bonds are 10 trillion worldwide. The alternative assets. The hedge funds are 1.9, the venture capital 900, and the real estate, as you can see, is growing up there. $5.3 million or a trillion dollars in, in real estate investments as an alternative asset investment is, is taking place right now. Um, in general, there are four quadrants of real estate investing. There's a private and a public. To each one of them, there is an equity and a debt component. On a private, uh, the difference between the two, because everyone, everyone understands this uh, investments is uh, commonly known as REITs for the public uh, uh, offering. But on a private, it means it's a direct investment in equity and, and, and equity in real estate. <coughs> so what that means is that me and you, partner, me and you find and identify a piece of property and identify an opportunity. And at that point, we directly together through an LLC, uh, mutually owned LLC with a management agreement, uh, directly invest uh, and become partners in that real estate. So that's the equity model. The debt is a direct investment when you become the bank. So like Bank of America, like BB&T, like anyone else, you're secured by the first lien position uh, of the property. And, and uh, in, in our case, we usually, um, we usually guarantee the, uh, uh, the, that, that instrument. On the public side, same thing. The publicly traded mortgage-backed securities are, is, is just another example of what we do on the, on, the, on the private side. So you can see how there is a correspondence between the private and public. It's nothing new. It's something that happened and, and, and it's taking 
taking uh, place for, have been taking place for many years. Um, so what's the difference between equity and debt real estate investment, as we just said? The real estate, uh, the, the, the equity, we, we acquire the hard asset, like the land. Uh, we, you know, if we decide to build properties or add, add into existing properties versus the debt, we're just making a loan, some type of a bridge loan. And many, many times, uh, as, as what we do is a short-term loan, uh, in, in our t anticipation that we will get the property financed through other means, through an exit. So it's either going to be a sell, either to the existing tenant, or it's going to be a sell to a third party. But we're so confident that the property is doing well, the property we, that we bind the property right, that even if it doesn't behave, if you will, then we will be able to just take it over and enjoy the, the, the outside one. So I usually tell my guys, or my investors, it's truly a model of we either win or win big. We either get our, our interest on time, or if not, we just wind up with a property and we wind up with, with a 50 cents on the back on, 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 uh, on, on the dollar with that, with that property. <clears throat> um, what's the difference between a conventional lender and a private lender? All right, so uh, the strongest lending authority right now in America is an SBA back type of a loan. And the market rates are usually a prime plus a margin. They go up to 80%. Usually they tell you it's a 60, 90 day close. They ask for strong credit, must be full, fully documented. And it's a three or five year term with a 20, 25 year amortization. <clears throat> if we go on a conventional, otherwise just a straight, uh, a straight uh, type of uh, amortization. With a private lender being you, we charge a higher rate, okay? So it's about eight to 11%. The loan to value may get 50 to 60%. The upside to the individual, a lot of people ask me, why is this guy willing to go with you? Why does he, want, why, why does he need you? Why doesn't he go to a bank? Because we offer fast closings. Because we can go over there, we can eye the property, and we can look at the valuation, and we can determine whether or not we can get it, if this is, this is a deal for us. The credits are not always uh, a, a something that we, we all credits are considered if the exit is available. So a lot of times we may get an individual who his credit is a little dented, but he has a co borrower that he knows he can go ahead and, and, and assign the deal to. Um, the documentation is not that heavy. And we ask for one or two year short term. So the reason they will sacrifice the high rate is because it's not for the length of, it's not for 25 or 30 years. It's for a short period of time. Sometimes it's six months, hopefully. Sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three years. But they will sacrifice the higher rate, maybe a higher cost because it's just a bridge of uh, a, a bridge for long. What we do usually is we cross collateralize, we find ways, hopefully if there's ways for us to cross collateralize, that's the upside for us. And uh, our interest rate is not that, so it's, it's, so it's, not, it's not a fluctuating thing, so which is uh, 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 a plus for them. And we, have, we, we identify an exit plan through an SBM, through a conventional sale, in every one of our transactions. There is no exception. If there is no exit plan to our deal, then we simply can't get into it. I don't care if we buy it at a, at a dime. I mean, the other day I was offered four acres of land. You may appreciate it, Rob. Four acres of land on Claremont, I believe. Yeah, it's on Claremont. Got a dilapidated house, and the listing price is 99000 So it's obviously not for the house, but it's 25000 an acre. But I'm kind of thinking, okay, so maybe I'll get it for eighty. But at the end of the day, what am I going to do with it? We, we are not here to buy the rest of America. There's a, lot, <laughs> there's a lot of properties for sale in America. There is, and, and that's the reason we are constantly looking to evaluate the low-hanging fruits what is it that we can turn around? What, how do we get into a property that I don't have to manage right away? Now it's, I need to identify an end user. 
and that's my game plan. I've got to identify an end user, and in most of the cases we do. Sometimes, if we don't, then we say the deal is so sweet, I'll, I'll, we'll manage it for as long as it takes. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, sure. So <clears throat> an example to that will be that, <clears throat> uh, as a matter of fact, today we were dealing with an individual who has a daycare center who wanted to buy another daycare center. And, you know, she didn't have enough cash or, uh, or the deal was a little bit two over on the, on the edge. So we always ask, do you own another pro other properties? And if so, is it free and clear? We're looking for other properties that we can cross collateralize. And it's a, uh, we, we, we'll soon see that we not, only, we, only, we not only do that, we do many other things to get our loan secure. Um, equity investments, on the other hand, is what we believe will take the lead in 2011 and obviously uh, 2012 for the next probably three to five years. The reason for that is very simple. There is no money in America right now, period, then. Sean knows it, we're trying to uh, look for clients, funding, banks, the there's too many reasons to, to offer why, the, why, 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 why there's no money in America, but I, I would maybe concentrate on two main. Number one, they're bleeding. The banks are bleeding. The banks are losing money. The banks are having so much paper, so much property in their hands that they're very, very cautious about on, on what they're doing. Those banks that do lend, are constantly being inundated by the FDIC who is coming in there and, and, and uh, auditing them. And I don't care if it's, an, if it's a conventional loan or even if it's an SBL loan. Because we, it, it doesn't make a difference. They are just completely inundated. 